What's going on guys, Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another trading video. Today's topic is going to be on multiple trade entries, aka legging in and legging out of trades. Um, this is a little bit more of an advanced topic, something I get questions about a lot of times. Um, there's definitely right ways and wrong ways of doing this. I'm going to go ahead and take some time here in this video to go over some of the ways professional traders use legging in and legging out in their advantage in trading. Um, there are multiple factors that they help with the entering and exiting trade like this help with not saying everybody has to or doesn't have to do it nor am i saying it fits everybody's style or strategy or anything but it is something that you can adapt to your trading plan it's something that is extremely beneficial if used in the right way and it's something that a lot of traders um ask about wonder about and not as many traders use especially properly so I'm going to go ahead and dive into a little bit more about this. I'm going to flip back and forth between the charts and this um, presentation here to go over with you guys. A little bit of hands-on experience of what I'm talking about with these charts. So starting with the benefits and uses of legging in and legging out. There are a few things that you know we want to pay attention to so that we ensure we're using this right. Um, one of the benefits for entering multiple positions on the same trade is you can limit your risk on a trading setup. I'll go over this more in detail as we go through this, but basically if you have a setup that you want to play or if it's something in your strategy and you say risk 3% per every trade, um, you can have a strategy that you know you get in 1% of your position, 1% risk, so a third of your position, and then you get in with 2% risk, two thirds of your position, and then you get in with a final third and you got your full position in and you can have a better average price into the trade. And essentially what this means is if the trade goes against you after your first entry you're only losing one percent instead of three percent your full loss right and then if the trade goes in your direction yes some of it might only be one times two times or three times your position entry but in the long run you will maximize your entry by legging into that over time and as it goes in your favor you multiply your winnings right so if it goes against you you're losing less if it goes for you you're winning more right um, that's the maximized reward potential on winning trades. So you have the potential to entering small and loading up as it goes in your favor to then have a maximized entry for profits. And if it goes against you, you can get out <clears throat> minimizing the risk on the first trades. I'll go over this all in detail more in the, in the charts, but um, you can easily close partial positions. So a lot of traders have you know multiple targets. And once their targets hit, they take partial profits off the table, trail the rest, or have a second target for the rest. And having multiple positions does make it easier to just simply close one out and let the other one ride. Um, also, specific trading strategies may call for legging in and legging out. I know I've traded strategies like that before. I know I've traded alongside people who trade strategies like that before. And it is a, you know, a very beneficial tool to have when you have a strategy that legging in and legging out would be more beneficial to, to know how to use it properly and to enforce that in your trading plan. So legging in and legging out, really there's three different trading styles in trading, but in general that um, this applies to. So we have legging in of breakout trades, legging in and legging out of pullback trades, legging in and legging out of reversals. And I've seen it used in all three styles, and it can be beneficial in all three styles. Essentially, legging in and legging out of positions can be beneficial in all trading styles, but I want to break it down into each individual one so you guys can get a little bit of a better idea of how exactly you can use this legging in to adapt into your trading style and your strategy and your personality to be able to benefit from this, um, I don't want to say advanced technique, but this technique that most amateurs and beginners don't really grasp fully or understand how to use properly. So with a breakout trade, um, the real benefits of legging in and out with breakouts, they're going to be kind of similar across the trades, but I just want to do a quick breakdown. Um, for breakouts, again, you can minimize your risk while maximizing your reward. Uh, as a lot of you guys know, breakouts are good, but they're a tough trading style because you get a lot of false breakouts, right? Everyone knows there are a lot of false breakouts in any market, but especially in Forex markets. A lot of that comes down to 24-7, uh, well, 24-6 access, and when you have 24-hour open markets, there's going to be times where there's a lot less liquidity, and there's a lot, a lot more market manipulation because of the lower liquidity. So there are times where there's more false breakouts than others. There's times of the day, like New York and London open, for example, where the breakouts are more consistent. And there's less fake outs, but there's still a lot of fake outs in any kind of market uh, environment. So 
when you break your trade down into two trades, three trades, four trades, and you minimize your risk on each one. So again, let's go back to you're risking 3% per trade. You break it into two entries. You're risking 1.5% each. So you enter a breakout with a 1.5% risk. It doesn't go in your favor. You only lost half of what you're normally risking per trade. So you save that other 1.5% of your capital for future trade setups. You're preserving your capital, right? That is the name of the game, preserving our capital and trying to grow it. Then you maximize your award because this entry starts to break out. You only have a half the position in. Then once it moves somewhat into your favor, that's where you have to put an exact strategy and exact rules into place. Let's say it moves 10 pips in your favor. Now you can enter the second half and maybe you pull the first entry stop to break even. So you're still only risking one and a half percent now on this trade. So if it turns around and goes against you, you lose out one and a half percent. But if it goes in your direction, you can win two times your position size. So your two to one risk to reward now is 6%, right? So each position's hitting double the one and a half percent risk, hitting 3% on each position. Now you're gaining 6% of your capital on one trade. So you can, you can minimize your risk, maximize your reward. You can avoid false breakouts resulting in a full loss. Like I said, you know, if you enter breakouts and you start with entering a third or a half your position, and then you add to it as the breakout is confirmed. Maybe you get an hourly or a four hour or a daily candle close, break and close outside of a range. Maybe that's your confirmation to add more. Maybe you enter on the breakout and then it pull back and retest when it rejects to break through and shows that it's retesting. Maybe you enter second half there. Um, there's a lot of different methods that you can use this legging in and legging out for, but essentially you can help minimize your risk and maximize your reward and also avoid these false breaks. And you have bigger winners on the moves that matter. So being a breakout trader, you really want to minimize your losses to small losses. And when you get winners, you want to ride them to be big winners, to make all your small losses worth the while, right? So when you're stacking your positions like this, when you do catch that big winner that runs, now you've got three entries instead of just one. And you can close out, let's say, two of them. You can close out one of them and let it ride, right? Or you can just let them all ride and have one target where they all hit. Or you can minimize the risk on the first two positions to break even and let this third one ride out. And now your risk is off the table. There's a lot of different benefits that doing this brings, but there's also some complication to using it, which is why I'm going to hop into the charts in a minute to show you. Pullbacks is the next trading style. Um, as you guys know, markets trend. And when markets make an impulse move higher or lower, they then pull back, they correct, they retrace, however you want to word it. Um, and that offers great opportunities to join the trend at discounted pricing, right? So we can use legging in as well with pullbacks to minimize risk and maximize reward, just like with breakouts. Um, you're going to lose small amounts when the trade is wrong. So if you enter a pullback and it ends up not being a pullback and it's a reversal and keeps going against you, you only have partial position entered. So you get out. Um, you have big winners when pullback is right. So when it starts going in your favor, you add to your position. And then when that goes in your direction, it ends up being a bigger winner than just the initial small position entry because you added to it. And you can catch pullbacks early on. This is another thing that's relevant in breakouts as well. Because you're only risking partial of your overall risk parameter per trade, you can try to maybe have your first entry on a pullback a little more aggressive. Try to catch an earlier on pullback where maybe, maybe let's say you're trading Fibonacci level retracements, you usually trade 50 or 618. Maybe you have a first entry a little more aggressive. You want to catch the 23.6 or the 30, um, the 318, 32.18, right? <clears throat> maybe you want to just, you know, try to catch these breakouts a little bit earlier on rather than having one entry point and one method of getting into it. Now you can try to catch it a little early on and then add to it as it goes in your favor so that you're not missing out on pullbacks that don't quite come to the 618 or don't quite come to the 50% fib, right? So you can get in a little bit earlier at the uh, more aggressive, more uh, strong trending pullbacks. And that, that can work in any sense, you know, that can work in, in not just Fibonacci, but, um, you know, if you want to enter the first line of support on a bullish pullback, instead of waiting for the stronger one down below, the major daily support, you want to enter the four hour support, a little entry, just in case the pullback is there and you don't miss the, the move, right? Then you can add to it. So you can catch them early on. You get bigger winners when they are right and smaller losers when you are wrong, right? And again, this stuff all comes down to using it properly, which I'll show you in a minute here in the charts. But at the end of the day, you do want to ensure that you minimize your risks and maximize your rewards because that's what trading is all about. And finally, the strategy that I don't typically trade myself, 
but a lot of traders out there do are reversal reversal trades. Now you can leg into reversal trades based off patterns, which I'll go over with you in a minute, or you can leg into reversal trades based off of strong zones, right? Whether you trade reversal patterns or strong zones or a combination of the two, um, legging in and out of trades can really help identify positions where you want to do these, um, you know, multiple positions to try to get into one. An example would be on a head and shoulders pattern. Maybe it's a, uh, a regular head and shoulders pattern, right? A bullish reversal into a bear market. Um, maybe you want to enter on that right shoulder, a small position. And then if it goes down and breaks the neckline, you enter a second position, right? That would be a good way to catch a bigger move, minimize your risk and maximize the reward. If that head and shoulders ends up playing out, you got in early and you got in on the time of the head and shoulders forming. So you got a double um, entry, right? You got better pricing. So uh, you can also use this in strong reversal zones. Maybe you have a partial entry right when the zone's touched and then another entry halfway or three quarters of the way through the zone to try to get a better um, pricing and try to catch that bounce in multiple spots so that you have different entries. Right, so I'm going to go ahead on the charts now and give you guys a little bit of a better breakdown when I can visually show you, and hopefully this concept will come to make more sense to you guys once you get some hands-on experience. Alrighty, so starting with our breakout examples, right? So as we can see on this chart right here with the EU, we've got price trading in a wedge pattern, right? So this is after a strong bearish move. We've got this bearish leg lower, and then we've moved into this wedge pattern. Price is making a set of um, lower highs and higher lows and consolidating together. This is a breakout pattern. Typically, we see this breakout to the downside. However, um, you know, you could trade it either way. You could trade a breakout to either side. But let's say, for example, we trade breakouts. Let's drop this down a time frame. Let's say we're trading on the four hour and we want to trade a break of this. We'll adjust these zones a little bit here for this time frame. Right. And let's say we want to trade a break of this. Let's say we want to trade to the upside because this is where we are now. What we could do is identify the area of resistance. We've got one here, which is also this upper trend line breaking. So let's say we want to trade this, this trade right here. We can have an entry here with, let's just use, you know, example purposes, a 35 pip stop, right? Two to one target, let's say. And our entry is right here at the top of this prior wick. Now, um, we have our first entry here and we enter one and a half percent risk because we're risking 3% of our trade of our capital per trade, right? So we enter right here, um, one and a half percent. Now let's say price comes up, breaks out temporarily and then reverses and stops us out. Now we only lost one and a half percentage of our trade and we move on to another setup, another plan. And we tried for a breakout and didn't get it. And we, uh, only lost half of our normal position size. Now let's say it breaks out, pulls back a little bit and finds support here. Now what we can do is throw another position entry here. Maybe we pull our stop up to half of this stop loss on the initial entry and have our second entry be either the full or this same one. And now we've eliminated partial risk, stacked up our position here. And now if we catch this move, then it goes in our favor and we're in the full risk reward percentage amount, right? We're risking 3%. Maybe that 3% is now cut down to two because we adjusted that and we ride it all the way up, right? Or maybe let's say it breaks out, gets to here. We've got a one-to-one -one move of our stop loss. So we pull this entry to break even. So now we no longer have risk on the table and we have a second entry here and our stop loss is at this stop here. So now we have the first entry at break even, second entry only risking one and a half percent, which is what we were initially risking. And now if this thing moves in our favor, we're winning off of the first entry and we're winning off the second entry when we only risked one of them to begin with, right? So we only risked one and a half percent of our trade, but once that went in our favor and we adjusted to break even, that ended up being um, both our full position entered, but only half the risk, right? So then let's say maybe this is the zone where the breakouts occurring from, and you want to enter partial here, you know, to try to get the early part of the breakout. Maybe you want to enter it right above the candle close the candle body. I mean, 
and then we want to enter a second one up here when we break the tops of the wicks. Then maybe if you have a tight stop, you can adjust, again, eliminating risk, or maybe you can eliminate half the stop loss risk like I showed you before. And, um, you know, we can try to catch that wave with multiple entries. Now, if you enter this first one and it reverses and goes down and never breaks out, okay, you only lost half your position. And if it would have gone in your favor, you would have been into at a better price. So you would have made more pips, right? So it's really all about just the simple concept in trading of minimizing risk, maximizing reward, right? So with these breakouts, you can, you can use it for a number of different ways. There's a million different methods you can use it for. Again, like I said, you can enter here on the pullback and have one entry when it initially breaks out, one entry when it pulls back to retest. That way you're not risking everything right off the bat. You know, if it starts to break out and then reverses immediately, like we see happen quite often, you only risk half of it. And then if it breaks out and pulls back to your entry and then goes back into profit, you had an opportunity to add to it instead of just having your initial entry, even though price came back to your entry spot and you had a perfect opportunity to add more, right? And then again, you can get in early on to try to catch breaks before they go, or you can have multiple entries as it breaks out. So you can just keep stacking up to catch those big winners with taking your risk off the table as you go. So yes, when you trade and you, let's say this breaks out, you enter here, you enter another here and another here. Yes, if it reverses against you, you could end up with a loss on this entry here, right? If it pulls down to here, it stopped this one out. But this initial entry here could have been a profit because it moved up to here and maybe all your stops were adjusted to here. And now you lost there, but you made off here, so it breaks you out at even. But the reason that we want to do that and the reason that that makes sense is if these are our three entries and price breaks out like this, yes, sometimes it will come back and stop us out for a small loss or break even. But we want to do it because every once in a while, two, three times out of 10 trades, the trade will do this before it comes back. And when you've got three times stacked on that, all these little small losses and break evens that we've been taking along the way, all become worth it because we just made 10% of our account in one win, right? So these, these entry methods, um, of legging in and legging out are great. And also, let's say we're a breakout trader and let's say we don't even want to leg in. We have one entry when it breaks the top of this zone, right? We have our first target here. Now, when it breaks out, again, sometimes it'll hit this, hit our target and pull back. Sometimes it'll just miss our target and it'll pull back. Sometimes it'll break out and immediately reverse. But, but we do this because sometimes it'll break out hit our target and blow right through it. And if we take all of our full position off the table here, we missed out on all these profits. So what we can do with legging out of our position is when price makes this breakout and hits our profit, our target, we take half of our position off, right? Just take half of it off. Then we adjust our stop to break even. We took profits, so we made some money off the trade and we try to catch that next move on the next portion of your trade that's in. Whether you took half your trade off, a third trades off, two thirds, three quarters, whatever it may be, you are maximizing your opportunity to catch those big moves, which especially when you're a trend trader, you want to be in the market when you catch those big moves, not on the sidelines. So that is why we want to use legging in and legging out, especially on breakouts. Now, another me method, pullbacks. It's pullbacks of the three, I would say, is the, the method where legging in is the least necessary or useful, but it is still a very good tool to use. Even with, with pullbacks, it can be very beneficial. So as you can see here, we're in a bear market, right? We're moving top left, bottom right, setting lower lows and lower highs. Now there are pullbacks all throughout this, but let's just use this, this big pullback here, for example, right? Now let's throw a Fibonacci out here on this move from here down to here before the pullback. And let's say we trade, you know, like I, I do mainly this zone, right? 382 to 618. Let's say that's our reversal point entry. And when we get a strong move like this, we want it to pull back to around this zone to look for our reversal point to continue the trend. This pullback was not significant enough to get into there. It wasn't a deep enough pullback for that entry to have triggered. So let's say you enter partial on 23.6, more aggressive partial on 382, and then maybe your stop loss is at 50. 
What this allows us to do is if we get a more tight pullback, like the 23.6, we don't miss the move and we caught it. And then if it pulls back deeper, maybe we load up our entry and add another one here. And then when it does pull back, we've got you know multiple positions, a better average price for entry, and we can ride that wave all the way down with two different entry points and, and, and make money off them all, right? Now we also um, can use this for, you know, once this pulls back, we can have an entry once, let's say this bearish engulfing was our entry, and we entered half our position there. Then we could have a second half be maybe 20 pips down further. So then we adjust our stop loss, get in a second one, and when this move continues in our direction, we have a bigger winner than it initially was. And that way we limit our risk of the first entry, and we maximize our reward by adding a second entry. And then maybe we can even, you know, add a third entry for this breakout level here and adjust our stops again. So if this is a false break, we get kicked out with either small profit, small loss, break even, whatever. But then we have another chance to ride it lower and catch this breakout to maximize our position to enter more, right? Um, so breakouts are, it's a pretty similar concept across the styles. So I don't want to spend too much time beating dead horse, but um, that, is the, that is the way you can use this for breakouts as well. You know, it's all about legging in and it's all about getting that position at the right point, catching those moves early, minimizing your risk when you're all right, maximizing your reward when you're right, take the small losses when you're wrong, not over leveraging and over risking yourself when you're long. All right. All right. Now the final entry strategy that we use this on is going to be for um, reversals trades, right? So if you look at this chart, we had a strong zone down here, right? If you look left, you can see price has reacted to it in the past. Resistance, support, support, broke, resistance, strong break, right? Support, support, <clears throat> now we're hitting it again. Now some people trade these reversals, right? They pick these strong zones and reversals are good because you can have a tight stop with a decent risk to reward, right? So you know you can clearly define your stop loss by the zone you're trading. And you can, you know, pick a target using price action or whatever a number of tools are. Now, um, this is a very beneficial trading strategy for legging in and legging out. And that is mainly because when we enter these zones, now let's, this, this is the major zone, but let's pull it back to, let's just say we're entering based off this, right? The supply zone we created. All right. So this is our supply zone. We'll drop it down a time frame. So it's a little bit bigger and easier to see, right? So here's our supply zone. Price came down and hit it and exploded higher right? Leaving this as an area that price is going to be watching next time it comes in. Now, when it first came into the zone, legging in, what we could do is let's say you have three different styles of entry, right? You have your aggressive entry right at the beginning of the zone when the zone gets touched. Let's say we have a conservative, a moderately conservative entry here in the middle of the zone, if price makes it through to there. And then we have an aggressive entry. I wouldn't say the end of the zone, but let's say like right near the end, three quarters the way down, right? So what we could do with legging in is let's say this trade isn't approaching this zone and we trade reversals off the zone. So these would all be buy limit orders, right? These would be buying when price comes down here. So let's say here, boom, our first entry was triggered. Now, if price ends up bouncing aggressively off of this and moving to the upside, right? This isn't grabbing it, but if price ends up moving aggressively off the upside, off that bounce, we caught the move. Maybe it's only a third of our position. Maybe it's a half of our position, but we caught the move. If price ends up triggering that and then moving lower, triggering this, and then it reverses, we caught the move with two times position. And finally, if price goes all the way down here, triggers this one, and then bounces up, we went three times, right? We got our full position. Now, I wouldn't recommend having all three entries like this for every type of trade like that because, you know, it's just it's just an option. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say to do this because everybody has their own styles and all. But this is a method. So let's say price just went all the way through all of them and went right through the zone. And we had our stop right below the zone here and we got stopped out. Now, our biggest loss is going to be from this entry and our smallest loss is going to be from this entry. But if you average them all together, chances are you're going to be around your normal risk, um, 3% or even less because, you know, you can position size each one of these to be um, smaller and smaller entries 
so that you're, or actually it'd be smaller to bigger entries because you're risking less pips with these, so that you uh, leg yourself in. Now this can help you by not missing the trade specifically. So what I would recommend is instead of having three, I would maybe do two, right? Maybe have a small, maybe like a third of your position here in case it catches and runs. And then maybe you have like two thirds of your position down here because this is where price usually makes it to before reversing, right? Um, so then if price goes all the way through the zone, you've got minimum risk on this one, a little bit higher risk here, but if you're risking 1.5% here, let's say, or 1%, let's say you're risking 1% here, you could have the full risk here, but this one would only be risking half a percent because you're only doing half the stop size, right? That's if you had the same position size for each entry, but the, the pip size would be different because this is risking just from here to the bottom of the zone. This is risking from the top of the zone to the bottom of the zone, right? So these entries can be great for um, when you trade these reversal zones, these supply and demand zones, support and resistance zones, and you want to catch these moves. Like this trade, for example, is we're live right now, and it's, it's at the bottom of this zone. So this could be a buy order. This could be maybe you entered here and maybe you entered here, and your stops, let's say, down here, right? This could be where you're entered and you're double time now, so you're waiting for it to go up. Or maybe even better, let's say your first position you enter midway through, and your second position you enter at the beginning of the zone, but once price bounces, right? So price comes down, triggers you, finds support, reverses, comes up, then you enter again here on more confirmation that price is reversing. And that would be an ideal way of doing this as well. If you want more confirmation for that second entry, so you can wait till price goes in your favor, now you can tighten your stop on your first entry and enter your second entry and try to maximize the gains you have off that bounce, right? All right, so aside from these zones, which as you see, there are some good um, uses of this position sizing, entering, entering into it, lagging in and out. Um, another option for reversals patterns, that is another good one, is let's say we've got, this just happened to be the same chart here, but let's just say we got a head and shoulders pattern, right? Right, so traditional, Trading strategies tell you enter head and shoulder patterns on a short like this off the break of the neckline, right? So this here is the neckline or the bottom of the shoulders meet, right? So traditional trading would tell you to enter on the break of that neckline. And then maybe, so here's an option for legging in. You enter here on the break, it pulls back to retest. You enter again there on the retest and you go long. And you go short, I mean, and you, and you have double your entry with minimizing the risk at first, right? But I've got another option for you. Let's say instead of entering on the break of the neckline, we want to try to catch when this right shoulder forms, right? When this, let, let's say we entered up here on this, this, so we can see the strong resistance zone, right? Rejecting all these time prices hits it. Let's say we want to do uh, whatever your, your criteria could be. But let's say this wick right here was assigned to you that it rejected right here, this right shoulder is forming. We want to enter, boom. We enter a first position here, price starts to fall, boom, we enter a second position here, price continues to fall, hits our target. Now we have all of this as one massive winner, and we have this as another winner. And the beauty of this is what we can do now is take this position off the table, cash the profits, let this position ride. Pull us back, Maybe we're at break even, doesn't trigger our break even, goes down for another leg lower, boom. This position now is all booked profits. Now look at how big of a win we have on one trade based off of this head and shoulders pattern, right? Now this can also be done with a double, triple top patterns, double, triple bottom patterns. I'm just going to use this chart because we're here. So this same example, right? Let's say that's a triple top and let's say this is the neckline of the triple top because that's how it works as well. Right? So, what we want to do traditionally is when this neck, when this double, triple top forms, we want to enter the break of this neckline. So, entry one right there. Boom. Maybe we have entry two here on the retest and we ride it down for a whip. But maybe after this double top forms and we see this triple top again with this whip bar rejection, maybe we're like, you know what? I want to try to get into this triple top at the best price possible. Entry here, stop right above the, the pattern, because that's what we do. 
Second entry here, we ride this for profits, we ride this for profits. Maybe again, we book our half of our profits here. Maybe we book all of our profits there. Price turns around, maybe we are trailing the rest and we ride it for the next wave lower. And now this triple top pattern that traditionally would typically only be from the neckline down, this would be our only reward. Now we are getting this as the whole reward and we only really risked entering here to the stop above there, right? So we entered that and we, we risked that to win that. That's a big risk to reward difference. And we are stacking that because we're entering another one down here, right? So there's really a lot of different methods you can use this position legging in and out of for. It's certainly something that I encourage you guys to play around with, to test, to see how you like it, to see how it fits in your strategy, to see what works and what doesn't work. But I'm telling you, this is a very efficient tool, something a little bit more advanced but it is a very efficient tool for trading and something that can really help you with your making your maximized winners and minimizing your losers. It can really, really be a great tool for doing that. Also, great for testing strategies and you know not getting caught in too many false breaks or false pullbacks or whatever you wanna um, do, or you know reversals that aren't actually reversals. It's a way to get in early and try to catch it before you risk your full position size and get stopped out with a full loss, right? All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video on legging in, legging out, position management. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I hope you practice this and put it into your plan. Please let me know if you have any questions, if you have any of the videos you want me to cover, anything at all, just let me know, and I will be sure to make something for you. Um, again, this was legging in, legging out. Corey Smith here at CoreFX. Check out the Instagram, core.fx, the website, corefxtrading.com. We now offer a $100 price action only course. So it covers all pure technical analysis only for $100, much more affordable. And, um, you know, for those of you guys who think, you know, price action is all you want to learn right now or all you need to learn, uh, I, I can promise you that that's not the right mentality and you, and you want to explore all the topics and the psychological aspect of it is going to be your biggest uh, pitfall and your hardest thing to overcome, developing a strategy and a routine, um, you know, building a plan, all that stuff is what the full course covers. I really highly recommend that to anyone that can, but if you can't afford it and, and, and you can't, you know, do the full 250, or maybe you've taken a lot of other courses and your mindset is good, you have a set strategy, you just need to tweak your price action skills, your technical analysis, then maybe the price action course is for you. But um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these. Make sure you check out the content. Make sure you check out the website, the Instagram, the YouTube, uh, Corey Smith, Core FX. Thank you guys very much. I'll catch you in the next one.